Okay, so let's turn to the second part uh, of the podcast, which is looking at Darwin evolution and natural selection. So again, I'm going to use this graphic guide as a way to talk through, give you a quick talking through of the history of evolution and natural selection. Okay, so as I said, I like this text a lot. I've highlighted the parts, right, that uh, are noteworthy to sort of look at. Um, so at the beginning here, it talks about the origin of species as a text, right? It sort of comes, it seems to come out of nowhere. Um, it seems to be, um, right, it's written in this very sort of accessible manner. It seems to be very common sense. Why did no one think about it before Darwin? And this page is really good. It talks about, you know, how we just couldn't, people just couldn't see evolution because of predispositions that they had. They had, they were predisposed to see the world in a different way. And so the evidence is there, but no one could really put it together based on sort of prejudicial sort of views of what, the, what they thought the world was. Okay. And so Darwin unlocks it, right? But you can see the images that they use here, the duck rabbit, uh, the vase or the two people talking, right? Sort of their illusions, right? And that's what um, is sort of being said here. That people, you know, understood that evolution was was sort of the idea, but they just could not put it all together. And it was Darwin who put it all together. So he, in this part, it talks about the things which stop people from seeing evolution, right, and natural selection. So this would be creationism. Um, notions of the permanence of the earth, which go along with creationist thinking. And then, um, and this is also, you get the argument from design, so I intelligent design here, right? This is the famous argument by William Paley. Okay, so this is what Darwin has to overcome, okay? Uh, and then essentialism, which is basically looking at, uh, creationism comes from, uh, the Hebrew Bible, uh, you know, monotheism, Christianity, and essentialism is from the Greek world, from Greek philosophy and Greek thought. But they're both operating in sort of uh, the same way, right? So that they're not seeing the world uh, as being fluid, as being changeable. And that's the key thing to the idea of evolution and natural selection. So both the Greeks and the ancient Hebrews have sort of a static sort of view of things, and that uh, keeps evolution from coming out in a timely fashion. 